Good morning, everyone, and welcome to morning prayer on the 23rd of November from St. Morgan Church. Uh, it's been a little while since I've led morning prayer through other things happening and being away on holiday, but uh, now back, glad to be uh, joining you all for this service of worship this morning. So good morning to Stefan and to Lynn and to Chris and to Val and to anyone else who's joined us this morning. Um, I put a link to the service sheet into the chat window if you'd like to follow along or else I'm sure by now most of you have the daily prayer app or else just like to listen along uh, in meditation. So this morning we are celebrating or remembering uh, a person called Clement, uh, the, who was the Bishop of Rome, one of the very first bishops of Rome, um, possibly the third or fourth Bishop of Rome after uh, St. Peter. Um, so he's quite an important person in the Christian calendar as he forms the bridge between the apostles and the writings that we read in the New Testament uh, in the Bible and the early church fathers. He was the father of the fathers, if you could see it that way. And he died in around 100 AD. So it's perfectly possible that he knew some of the apostles in person and was taught by them. So a very, very important link. Um, if I now just read you what our little book about saints says about Clement. It says, Clement was active as an elder in the church in Rome towards the end of the first century and was reputed to have been a disciple of the apostles. He wrote a letter to the Corinthians which focused on ministry in the church and dealt with controversial issues relating to authority and duty. The letter clearly reveals an exercise of authority on the part of one senior presbyter intervening in a conflict in another church. And as such, it provides valuable information about the history of the developing church and its ministry at the time. Clement's hierarchical view of church order set a future pattern for Episcopal practice and ministry. He seems to have been president of a council of presbyters which governed the church in Rome and he appears to be writing on their behalf. A fourth century document states that Clement was exiled to the Crimea where he was then put to death by being thrown into the sea with an anchor around his neck. Uh, of course, he was put to death because it was still in the period of Roman persecution. So he wasn't put to death by, by other Christians. It was actually by the Romans uh, for being such an important leader of the Christian church. And there is a, uh, you know, a very famous letter, a letter of Clement to the Corinthians, which um, is only just kind of older than many of the uh, letters that Paul wrote to the churches. So it's actually considered very significant in church history. Um, there's a little extract from it here, which I might read later on if there's time. Uh, but it's one of those letters which is um, only just outside the remit of the canon of the New Testament and could easily have been included because um, it is considered uh, legitimate and authentic. Uh, so it's interesting to go and read that and see what the third or fourth pope was saying around the end of the first century, just, um, you know, a few, about as long after um, Jesus died as, um, as we are now after the Second World War, for example. So still kind of just about barely in living memory. So now we'll turn to our service sheet and begin our service <coughs> of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, Surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, 
Blessed be God forever. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm this morning is Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Cloud and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes up before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness, and all the peoples have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced, because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of the faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre with the lyre and the voice of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 100. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and And to the the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and shall be forever. Amen. So now Helen's going to read our first reading. I wasn't actually in the hot seat. I had to move to the hot seat this morning. (laughs) So we're reading from Isaiah, and it's chapter 17. An oracle concerning Damascus. See, Damascus will cease to be a city, and will become a heap of ruins. Their towns will be deserted forever. There will be places for flocks which will lie down and no one will make them afraid. The fortress will disappear from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. On that day, the glory of Jacob will be brought low and the fat of his flesh will grow lean. And it shall be as when reapers gather standing grain, and their arms harvest the ears, and as when one gleans the ears of grain in the valley of Refrain. Gleaning, gleaming will be left in it, as when an olive tree is beaten, two or three berries in the top of the highest bough, four or five on the branches of a fruit tree says the Lord God of Israel. On that day, people will regard their maker and their eyes will look to the Holy One of Israel. They will not have regard for the altars, (coughs) the works of their hands, and they will not look to what their own fingers have made, either the sacred poles or the altars of incense. On that day, their strong cities will be like the deserted places of the Hivites and the Amorites, which they deserted because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, though you plant pleasant plants and set up slips of an alien God, set out slips of an alien God, Though you make them grow on the day that you plant them and make them blossom in the morning that you sow, yet the harvest will flee away on the day of grief and incurable pain. Ah, the thunder of many peoples, they thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of nations, they roar like the roaring of the mighty waters. The nations roar like the roaring of many waters. But he will rebuke them, and they will flee far away, chased like chaff on the mountains before the wind and whirling dust before the storm. At evening time, lo, terror. Before the morning, they are no more. This is the fate of those who despoil us, and the lot of those who plunder us. Thank you, Helen. So we continue with our canticle, a song of the new creation. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. 
Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over clean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. our responses. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus, which we'll say through together. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, 
free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So before we pray, I'm going to read that little reading from the letter of Clement to the Corinthians that I promised earlier, um, for he was certainly someone who was uh, persecuted for the cause of right. And he writes, How blessed and wonderful are the gifts of God, my friends! Some of them we can already comprehend, the life that knows no death, the splendour of righteousness, the, life, the, the liberating power of truth, the faith that is perfect assurance, the holiness of living chastely. But what of the things God has prepared for those who wait for him? Only the creator and father of eternity knows their greatness and their beauty. Let us strive then to be found among those who wait for him, that we too may share in these promised gifts. And how is this to be done, my friends? By fixing our minds on God, by finding out what would be pleasing and acceptable to him, by doing what is in harmony with his perfect will, and by following the way of truth. Thus, injustice, wrongdoing of every kind, greed, covetous, quarrelling, malice and fraud should all be renounced. This is the way, dear friends, that we find our salvation. Even Jesus Christ, the high priest by whom our gifts are offered and the defender by whom our weakness is aided. Through him we can gaze into the highest heaven and see the reflection of God's perfect and pure face. Through him the eyes of our hearts are opened and our dim and darkened understanding unfolds like a flower in the sunlight. For through him the Lord has willed us to taste the wisdom of eternity. As it is written in scripture, he is the splendour of the majesty of God, and is as much greater than the angels as the title he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So, my dear friends, let us serve resolutely in the army of the Lord, never swerving from his unerring commands. In the case of our physical bodies, the head is nothing without the feet, and our feet are useless without the head. Even the seemingly insignificant parts of our bodies are necessary and valued for the good working of the whole, each part working cooperatively, all united by a common subordination to maintain the integrity of the body. In the same way, let this corporate body of ours in Christ Jesus be maintained in integrity. Each of us should give precedence to the other according to his or her spiritual gifts. The strong are not to despise the weak, and the weak are to respect the strong. The rich should provide for the poor out of their resources, and the poor, for their part, should thank God for giving them somebody who can meet their needs. If you are wise, then display your wisdom by good deeds. And if you are modest, let others speak of your modesty instead of proclaiming that fact yourself. To God we owe everything, and therefore on every count we are under obligation to thank him. Glory be to God for ever and ever. Amen. So wonderful reading there, and uh, it's uh, replicating many of the things that we do read elsewhere in the letters of the New Testament, um, and it is very worthy of being read alongside Scripture, I believe. So I encourage you to go and read the letter of Clement to the Corinthians uh, one more time, 
um, to see what he has to say from the perspective of a few decades after Jesus. So now let's come to our time of prayer. As we give thanks to God for all his gifts to us, for those people that he has placed in our lives who love us and who we are given to love. May we, as Clement says, gaze on you, Lord, so that we might be transformed to be like you. Father, help us to see you in all creation. In the coming frosts of winter. In the lights and celebrations of Advent and Christmas. In the early winter flowers already sending up shoots. Help us to notice you in all people, in all places. To never forget your goodness. To feel you in our hearts, inspire us to love and compassion. To forgiveness of our own failings and those of others. To reach out in service to others. Lord, we pray for all carers. All those who turn away from selfishness We ask for your peace, for well-being in our minds and bodies. And remember those who have recently died. And all those families who are bereaved and mourning the loss of someone they love. Father, be with those who grieve. Comfort them. And remind them that this love that they have known is always present and can never be lost. Creator and martyr and father of eternity, whose martyr Clement bore witness with his blood, to the love he proclaimed and the gospel that he preached. Give us thankful hearts as we celebrate your faithfulness, revealed to us in the lives of your saints, and strengthen us in our pilgrimage as we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you to everyone who joined us for this service of morning prayer, to Helen and Margaret in the room in the church with me, and also to uh, Pat and to Val and to Chris and to Lynn and to Stefan and anyone else who is watching online. Um, I'm just going to quickly remind us of which service we have uh, this week. Midday is at uh, St. Evel on Wednesday for Holy Communion uh, with Angela will be leading that service um, uh, tomorrow afternoon at midday. Um, and then we are back here on Thursday morning at 9am for morning prayer. Um, and uh, anything else that I need to remind us of, Helen, before we um, come back on Thursday? No? Nope. Nope? Great. So on Thursday, we'll tell you all about the Sunday services and uh, if anything is happening. Oh, there is a messy church this week, so that's coming up on Saturday. So I'll remind you of that on Thursday as well. So until uh, Thursday morning or, or Wednesday midday, if you're coming to that service, I offer you God's blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for this day and always. Amen. So farewell for now and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.